If you feel like somebody retracted their attention from you, maybe they're not texting you back, maybe they're not reaching out as much, this video is gonna be a game changer for you. It's gonna help you understand more of the energy dynamic and exactly what you can do to reel the magnetic energy back so that they either come around or you're in your own frame and you don't even care. Now, the first thing to realize about this dynamic of wanting somebody to want you again is that people feel what we feel about ourselves. Now, if we are projecting out an energy that says, I want somebody else, and that also means I lack somebody else. I lack that energy. Because anything we want, we also lack. We don't have it. So if we're wanting someone else to want us again, we're wanting someone to want, <laughs> then what that really is is deep down, it's searching for validation and it's searching for approval from somebody else. Now, the more we want something from somebody else and the more other people can feel that off of us, the less likely they are to actually give that thing. And think about it just energetically. If somebody came up to you and said, I really want this from you. I really want this from you. Like maybe, uh, I don't know, what would an example be? Like one of those network marketers, you ever see one of those network marketer things where it's like, come to my thing. And it's like, uh, it's like something that's going to get you into buying something else. And you could tell that they really want you to go. Well, the, the more they really want you to go, you feel that. You're almost like, no, I don't, I, this thing doesn't feel right, you know? I went recently to uh, Cabo, and in Cabo, when I got there, they were, someone was taking us to go see our room, but they also have this timeshare option. And I've seen it before. I, I know about, like, when you go to certain hotels and stuff, they want you to go to a free 90-minute breakfast because at that free 90-minute breakfast, but which, by the way, this was already an all-inclusive resort, but at that free 90-minute breakfast, they also, they're also going to give you like three to $500 of spa credits or something like that to get a massage. But at the same time, I know what comes at the end of that. The end of that 90-minute free breakfast, they hardcore try to sell you into a timeshare to make like a lifelong decision to come to this like timeshare thing. And the lady that was talking to us was really, really eager. She really, really wanted us to go. And it's almost like she wouldn't take no for an answer. And eventually I told her, I was with some, friend, some friends. I'm like, listen, I know what you're doing. I, I, I know I had an ex-girlfriend that was actually in that industry. So I know about it. It's like, we do not want to do it. I, would, I was like, I will pay you. I would pay to not go to that dinner or to not go to that thing. I'd pay more than three to $500 in spa credits to not go. And then she got the point. And... The thing is, though, is when you really, really want someone, especially, here's the thing, when you really, really want someone else to want you, it's in a way wanting a form of manipulation. It's wanting them to want you so that you can get your needs met. And what if this were the thing? So there's two aspects to this. One, giving ourselves the validation and approval that we want in somebody else. That'll change the game. Because when you're looking for it on the outside, a lot of times you'll attract people that don't give you the validation just because that feels normal from childhood. Normally it's an a inner childhood need that wasn't met as a kid, so then we attract people that are similar to that mom and dad energy of not giving the validation or approval. Or we're projecting out needy energy that's blocking them from giving. Like They would actually give you that validation or support if you would just give it to yourself and not need it. Stop craving it from the outside. So that's why this video is going to show you how to... How to deal with both those energies. Now, the, the first thing to realize as well about this is if you would just let go, let go of needing them to want you, letting go of needing their validation, you would have it. That's the trippy thing. This is simply about letting go of that. When you don't care what other people think about you, that's when most likely they will come around and they might think more positively. But when you really, really want them to think a certain way about you, that's when the resistance is created. That comes from the Alan Watts backwards law. The backwards law and a backwards law is something where the opposite is actually true. That is, what is the saying? It's like a, an acceptance. Wanting a positive experience is a negative experience. Wanting a positive is a negative. Accepting a negative is a positive. So wanting someone to like you, to validate you, or to give you approval is a negative experience. 
accepting your own self and not needing them to give you approval or validation is a positive experience whether they give it to you or not. The more you want someone to like you, the less they're actually inclined to like you because they feel that needy energy. The more you accept yourself and the less you care whether they like you or not and you're just yourself unapologetically, the more you're going to be in this energy that is attractive. So the key to wanting them to want you again is also realizing that this is all a projection of energy. If we want someone to want us, what that means is we aren't wanting ourselves. We have maybe even abandoned ourselves to get somebody else to like us. That's a lot of times when the pleaser mentality comes out, the people pleaser, where it's hard to set boundaries and you want to change your center of gravity to make others happy because we want their approval and validation. The thing that changes everything is when you bring the energy back, bring the energy back into your body and realize that there may be a story there that says that if they give you the love, the validation, or the support that mom and dad maybe didn't do, then I'll be good enough. Then I can feel safe. And a lot of times as well, this is a safety thing because as kids, maybe we didn't feel safe just being ourselves. So we thought we had to be differently. We had to, mer we had to like merge ourselves into this way of being so that mom and dad would approve us. And what then ends up happening is we end up losing and abandoning ourselves to make other people happy. And what most likely is happening now, if you clicked on this video, is that that other person, you may be merging or moving your energy in order to get the other person to want you or to like you. But the act of doing that in of itself is what is repelling the love, what is repelling the validation. And the answer and the key is to realize you can stop believing the story that says you need their love, their validation in order to be happy. To realize that if you were to stop abandoning yourself and just give yourself permission to be the most bold and authentic you, you would be way more attractive and way more magnetic. This is about pulling your energy back and to stop giving away your power. You don't need their love, approval, or validation in order to feel empowered. And the more you just give yourself permission to be that version of you, the more that will be magnetic energy. There was a period of time where I was very afraid of like setting boundaries with people, very afraid of being the most, being the most unapologetic version of myself. But the moment I decided to be that version of me and to actually as well express the true vulnerable me, the true vulnerable me meant like being real, valuing being real and vulnerability and authenticity over validation, approval, and wanting other people to like me. So what this is really about, I was reading a book last night called Atomic Habits, and it talks about how like a lot of times when people try to change habits, what they do is they try to change the action. I'm going to change what I do. But the real way to change your habits that really sticks is to change your change the way you see yourself, the identity-based beha behaviors. Because once you do something a certain amount of time, it changes the way you see yourself and it changes your identity. Now, there may be an identity around, and this is the part of the video that I think could really change your life permanently, and this is what changed for me, is I went from valuing what other people thought of me, I went from valuing other people's validation or approval, I went from changing my center of gravity to make others happy, abandoning myself, to realizing that that was a coping mechanism I was using in order to get my inner child needs met that weren't met when I was a kid. So I would change my center of self. I'd have trouble setting boundaries. I'd crave other people's validation or approval. And... That led to me feeling like I was just drained, like I was running on empty. And it was like that for a long period of time because I was so, there was almost like an afraid energy to go into tension. I think that's a lot of times how people pleasers are built, by the way, or like made. They had, they experienced tension in childhood and they decided, I don't want this tension stuff. I'm just going to make everyone else happy. But it may take tension for you to go into experiences where you express the real you, whether people agree with it or not. 
When you set boundaries with people, it's like they may not like that you set boundaries. That's okay. That's their shit, not yours. And being able to go into tension does take courage. However, when you do it, you start to feel like there's a whole new world that opens up. It's like, wait, I can set boundaries with people? Wait, I can express the real me and like people aren't going to get mad or reject me? Or even if they do, that's their shit, not mine? Because the truth is you can really only reject yourself. And sometimes we're fighting to not get rejected. We're like, I don't want to be abandoned again. I don't want to be rejected again like I, was, like I felt in childhood. So one of the most powerful things you can do to revert this energy back to yourself is to bring the energy back and to then start to take on the value or the sense of identity that it is more important for you to be vulnerable and for you to be authentic than it is for you to be liked or to get validation or approval. Change that value within yourself. Have that be the, the guiding principle, the, the compass that you are following. Because once I started to be more vulnerable and authentic over validation and approval, my life changed in many ways. I started to value that virtue more. Our virtues kind of make up our identity. The things that we value, values are kind of like virtues. For a long time, I heard Tony Robbins talk about this at his conferences and in his books, and it never really resonated with me until a certain point when I realize that values are like belief systems. Like what we believe to be a true about ourselves is reflected out, is, is projected out and reflected back. So if we believe we're not worthy, if we believe we don't deserve love, if we believe we can't hold on to love or like doesn't stay around, these are all beliefs and stories that we've adopted from childhood. And therefore that's the reflection that we get back because we're, we believe it. But our beliefs are also tied to our virtues. If we believe that we're like, the wounded, a wounded victim from childhood, then we'll act and have and attract people in our lives to reflect that back to us. So one of the most powerful things you can do to revert this energy back is to literally bring the energy back to yourself and not care whether they like you or not. And to focus more on liking yourself and being in your own frame and leading in your own life and developing a dope-ass lifestyle. Because that will, be, that will be an energy that is projected out that is way more powerful than wanting or needing other people to think or feel a certain way about you. The truth is you are magnetic when you are in your own frame. You are magnetic when you aren't attached to what other people think. And being attached to what other people think normally is because there was an attachment to what mom and dad thought, which is normal. I mean, it's, it's a part of the process, but it's at a certain point realizing, oh, that's their stuff, not yours. You don't need to be a certain way. You don't need to be a doctor and like do all these things in order for you to be loved and supported. You could be yourself. Give yourself permission to be yourself and break the tie that you have to needing that validation and approval by giving it to yourself and by realizing that the more you give yourself permission to be polarized and to be yourself, the more free you're going to feel, the more attractive your energy is going to be. And if you haven't heard, I am doing something where two or three times a week, I text out my top epiphanies, books I'm reading, incense I'm learning. And if you want to text me your questions, I've been putting these questions in YouTube videos. All you do is you text me at 424-304-0104 or click the link in the top of my description box below. And I'll be answering those in future YouTube videos. So text me your questions and then I'll text you two or three times tops a week, top epiphanies and stuff like that. And I can engage you with you there. Now also, there is a video that will help you to learn how to, like why when you let them go, they always come back and how to have that magnetic energy. It's one of my most popular videos. Check out this video right here. Why is it that when you want someone, when you desire them, they feel that energy and it literally repels them away like a magnet? However, the moment you actually let them go, like right now as I do this, it's really, these are really strong magnets by the way. I gotta be careful. 